Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Last time I told you about a really crazy issue that I had with Shadowplay, where recordings would have black frames or repeated frames when I connected my monitor to the wrong DisplayPort connector on my graphics card. As it turns out, Nvidia knows about this issue as stated by the Nvidia Germany Twitter account, so we can only hope that they will fix this issue soon. So when it's working, then Nvidia's Shadowplay is a really great free feature that I've been using a lot in the last few years. But as a content producer and a gamer, I need a solution that works all the time. I don't want to spend an entire weekend trying to figure out what caused my gameplay captures to get corrupted. I have very little time to just sit down and play a game for fun. So when I hit that record button, then I want to be sure that it just works. So as I mentioned in my last video, I set out to find an alternative to Shadowplay, which also uses Nvidia's NVENC to encode video, as that has a much smaller performance impact than X264 software encoding, which is also why I'm exclusively looking at tools that support NVENC for encoding, and that rules out other tools like DxTory. So the tools that I'm going to compare to Shadowplay are OBS, Bandicam and Action. So what did I know about these tools before I tested them? OBS is a free open source software and compared to Shadowplay, its biggest downside is probably that it doesn't have an in-game overlay. This means that unless you have a second monitor where you can run OBS on, you don't know if it detected your game, you don't know if it did start to record and you don't know if the replay was saved after you pressed the key on your keyboard. Recordings can have up to 6 audio tracks, which is great as you can then have one track for the audio of the game, another one for the audio of your voice over IP software like TeamSpeak or Discord, and another one for your microphone. This helps you when you edit the video as you then have full control over these separate audio sources. The file names of the recordings can be customized, but unlike Shadowplay, OBS is sadly unable to use the name of the game for the file name, which makes it a bit harder to organize your recordings. A really cool feature of OBS is that you can use a second graphics card for the video encoding, which I will tell you more about in a minute. It also comes with a replay buffer, however it stores the video in your RAM, which means that you need at least 16GB of RAM, as the replay buffer needs about 2GB for 8 minutes of gameplay when you record at 1080p with 60fps and a quality setting of 20 for NVENC. OBS only records with CFR or constant frame rate, which is a bit more demanding and results in larger files, however this also has its benefits which I will tell you more about later. Bandicam costs 39 US dollars and you need one license per seat or PC. Like Shadowplay it has an in-game overlay and you can only record two audio tracks, but unlike Shadowplay you can select a source for your primary audio track. You can customize the file name of your recordings and you can use a second GPU for the NVENC encoding, but sadly it doesn't have a replay buffer and while you can choose between variable and constant bitrate, it only records with a variable frame rate. Action is cheaper than Bandicam but also needs one license per PC. It has an in-game overlay and it also supports a maximum of two audio tracks. Sadly, you can't customize the file names, but it uses a system very similar to Shadowplay to keep things organized. It cannot use a second GPU for NVENC encoding, but it does come with a replay buffer, which is sadly limited to 13 minutes and 1080p according to their website. Also, like Shadowplay and Bandicam, it only uses a variable frame rate for the recordings. Now, what's up with using a second GPU for the NVENC video encoding? The idea behind this is that you add a less powerful, maybe an older graphics card, which then takes care of the video encoding so that your primary graphics card has more power left to render the game, which should slightly increase the frame rate. So how can you do this and what do you need to pay attention to? So when you look inside of your PC, then your current graphics card will be installed in a PCIe slot which provides 16 PCIe lanes. Depending on where you install your second graphics card, your primary card might only get 8 PCIe lanes, which you can see here inside the GPU C tool. Based on tests that other YouTubers and websites did, it seems that the X8 mode won't become a bottleneck even for powerful cards like a GTX 1080. 
However, if you want that your card has access to all 16 PCIe lanes, then you should take a look at the manual of your mainboard, as some like the ASUS Maximus X Apex have one PCIe slot which gets four lanes from the chipset, which is more than enough for NVE and C encoding. And so your primary card will still get 16 PCIe lanes when the second card is installed. In case that you have two monitors, you now can either have both connected to your primary graphics card or you connect your second monitor to your second graphics card, which OBS does benefit from as I will show you a bit later. Now to have OBS use the second GPU for encoding, you go to the recording settings, select NVE and C as encoder and change the GPU from 0 to 1. You can also use this for streaming if you want to. I also found that using CQP or image quality based encoding with the value of 20 and Blu-ray as profile provided very good image quality and good performance inside of Adobe Premiere while any other preset would result in very sluggish timeline scrubbing. So to do the same in Bandicam you go to video, click on settings, select H.264 NVE and C and select your second graphics card in the GPU device drop down menu. I ended up using 90 for quality, which made the recordings look nearly as good as what I got in OBS, which is much better than what Shadowplay creates even at the highest bitrate. Then you want to test if the second card is actually used for the encoding. To do that, you open GPU-C and select your second graphics card. When you then start to capture your gameplay, then you will see the GPU load increase, which confirms that the encoder uses the second graphics card instead of the primary one. Now to find out how these tools affect the performance of the game that you are recording, I did quite many tests with the Unigen Superposition benchmark. There are many numbers in this chart, so I'm not going to read out all of them. But if you want to take a closer look, then you can find the link to the results in the description down below. So with all recording tools disabled and with the benchmark running in exclusive full screen mode, I got a minimum frame rate of 86.91 an average of 116.46 and the maximum frame rate of 158.03. Just by having OBS running on the second monitor, which was connected to my primary graphics card, I lost about 10 frames per second on average. And this was not just in a single test, I ran all these tests multiple times to make sure that I get conclusive results. When I disabled the preview in OBS, then this increased the average frame rate by about 1 FPS. When I connected the second monitor to my GTX 1050 and had OBS running there, then this had a positive impact on the frame rate as you can see here, where you should not only look at the average, but also the minimum and maximum frame rate results. So just by launching OBS, mind you I'm not recording yet, it just hooked into the game's process to be able to capture it, you lose 10 FPS when your primary graphics card has to draw OBS. I'm not sure if there's a technical limitation that is responsible for this major frame rate decrease. But since neither Bandicam nor Action cause a lower frame rate just by having them active and drawing their overlay inside of the game, I hope that the OBS developers can do something about that performance issue. Now let's talk about the performance when we are recording gameplay. Shadowplay reduces the average frame rate by about 3 frames. When OBS uses the primary graphics card for the encoding, then you lose about 10 FPS on average which means that compared to just having OBS running, the frame rate stays pretty much the same while recording, which is interesting. When you then move OBS over to the second graphics card and also have the second card do the encoding, then you regain about 5 FPS, which means that it's nearly on the same level as Shadowplay now. The story is similar with Bandicam, where we also see a FPS increase when it uses the second graphics card for encoding. Action doesn't have the ability to use a second graphics card for encoding, but not only that, it also had the biggest impact on the frame rate of the benchmark with about 14 FPS less on average. I then repeated the same set of tests when the benchmark was running in borderless windowed mode, which resulted in a lower frame rate overall, which is one of the reasons why you should always play in exclusive full screen mode, as that provides the highest frame rates and the lowest input lag. So even though the frame rates are lower due to the borderless windowed mode, the results from the encoding tests are very similar to those from the exclusive full screen mode, as using the second graphics card for the encoding slightly increased the frame rates and action again caused the biggest FPS reduction of all four recording tools. So adding a second graphics card and have it do the encoding increases the performance of the game during recording and streaming. 
That said, the performance gain is not that big. And many of you will probably say that it's not worth it. And that's a valid opinion. But for some of you it might be interesting to install a second graphics card and see how that affects the performance of games while streaming or recording gameplay, as you get closer to the performance offered by Shadowplay while you get superior image quality. As you might know, Shadowplay cannot record more than 60 FPS, while OBS, Bandicam and Action allow you to capture at higher rates. So I did another set of tests using the benchmark in Rise of the Tomb Raider, where I recorded the gameplay at 120 FPS. With OBS running on the GTX 1080 and using it for the encoding, the average frame rate dropped by about 28 FPS. But when I moved OBS over to the 1050 and had that do the encoding, then I only lost about 7 FPS while recording 120 FPS at 1080p. The story is similar with Bandicam, just that OBS manages to provide higher frame rates while recording at 120 FPS on the 1050. Action is sadly again at the bottom of this list with the biggest FPS loss while recording at 120 FPS. So what is the conclusion then? To find out, we should have a look at my list of pros and cons after using OBS, Bandicam and Action. OBS is free and open source. It uses a constant frame rate to record videos, which helps to avoid video and audio sync issues, especially during editing. It offers a replay buffer. You can use a second GPU to do the NVE and C encoding. The encoder settings are highly customizable. Performance is close to Shadowplay when using a second graphics card. You can get better image quality than Shadowplay. 60 FPS recordings feel very smooth, maybe thanks to recording with CFR. You have up to 6 audio tracks in your recordings, which is great for editing. I never had a single corrupted recording and it supports plugins. But just by launching OBS you reduce the game's frame rate and tools like RTSS can cause problems for the game capture. I currently have the problem that I must close RTSS or OBS will not detect Overwatch. I will even get a black screen when I select it manually as the hook fails when RTSS is active. I know that others don't have that issue and I only encounter it with Overwatch, so I don't know why it happens, but I still want to mention it as that might also be a problem for others. So if you are looking for a Shadowplay alternative, then probably the biggest downside of OBS is that it doesn't have an in-game overlay. This means that when you have just one monitor, then you have no idea if OBS detected the game that you are playing. You have no way to tell if the recording is active and you get absolutely no feedback at all when you press the hotkey to save the replay buffer. So if you can't run OBS on a second monitor to check these things, then it might be the only reason for you not to use OBS as this missing feedback makes it very hard to use OBS. Sadly there are also no plugins that fully resolve this issue, at least not as far as I'm aware of. Then the replay buffer is not reset when you save it. This means that when you have 8 minutes of gameplay in your replay buffer and then save it, then you will get a video file that is 8 minutes long. When you then save the replay buffer again 1 minute later, then you will get another 8 minutes long video instead of a 1 minute long video. I would really prefer the replay buffer to reset every time I save the buffer, like it does in Shadowplay and Action. Another concern about the replay buffer is that it is stored in your RAM. I would really like to get the option to store it on a drive like Shadowplay and Action do, as that helps gamers who don't have that much RAM in their system. And lastly, unlike Shadowplay, Bandicam and Action, OBS cannot use the title of the game for the recorded video file, which makes organizing the videos a bit harder than it has to be. Bandicam provided the best performance while recording. It can use a second GPU for NVE and C, and when you use a second GPU then you get a performance that is very close to Shadowplay with a video quality that is better than what Shadowplay offers, but not quite as good as what I got in OBS. However, Bandicam sometimes failed to detect the game. I had to launch it multiple times to get it to show the overlay and record it. But the even bigger issue was that when I didn't stop the recording before I closed the game or when the game crashed, then the active recording was corrupted and I could not recover it. Bandicam does come with a tool to fix broken recordings, but it doesn't work with MP4 files. It also doesn't have a replay buffer and it only records with variable frame rate, which can cause audio and video sync issues. 
Also, 60 FPS recordings in OBS felt smoother for some reason, which could be down to OBS recording at a constant frame rate. And Bandicam only supports two audio tracks, which leaves you with less freedom when editing your recorded footage. Now how about action? Unlike OBS and Bandicam, it never failed to detect the game. It comes with a replay buffer and unlike Bandicam, it never corrupted a recording. However, the replay buffer is limited to 13 minutes and according to the website 1080p. The encoder options are very limited as you can only choose between four different presets. You cannot use a second GPU to do the NVE and C encoding. It only supports recording with a variable frame rate. 60 FPS recordings don't feel as smooth as those from OBS. It only supports two audio tracks, which again limits your options if you are a content producer. And it had the worst performance of all tested tools, as it had the biggest impact on the frame rate of the game. So, <laughs> which of these tools should you choose then? Well, if you don't need more than two audio tracks and if the Shadowplay recordings don't give you a headache when you edit them, then you can just stick with Shadowplay. But if you want the best possible video quality, the smoothest recordings, three or more audio tracks, a replay buffer, high performance encoding and the ability to record at 120 FPS for some sick slow motion frag videos, then OBS is the best option. You just have to find a way to deal with the issue that it doesn't have an in-game overlay and that the game capture sometimes requires that you manually select the process of the game that you want to capture. If you are a streamer and already use OBS, then I encourage you to try and use a second GPU for the NVE and C encoding. I've had a few people try that out and they said that this fixed the frame drops that they had while streaming. Let me know in the comments down below if that worked for you too. Now, if you don't need a replay buffer or more than two audio tracks, but cannot live without an in-game overlay and want better video quality or the ability to record with 120 FPS, then Bandicam is a good solution as it doesn't have a big impact on the game's frame rate while recording and it also allows you to increase its encoding performance by using a second GPU for NVE and C. However, to avoid that you lose a great gameplay moment to a broken recording, you might want to create several shorter recordings and you absolutely want to make sure that you stop the recording before you exit the game. If action would allow you to tune the encoder settings to make the video quality better than shadow plays, or if it allowed you to choose CFR instead of VFR, then I could live with the lower frame rate that you get while capturing your gameplay and I might even recommend it over Bandicam then, as it never corrupted a recording and comes with a replay buffer. But based on the versions that I tested, I highly recommend that you give OBS and Bandicam a shot when you are looking for a shadow play alternative. So let me know in the comments down below which recording software you use. And if you try to use a second GPU for NVE and C encoding, I would be very interested to hear how that worked for you. If you enjoy my videos, then it would be great if you could support me on Patreon, as YouTube's ad revenue is sadly not enough anymore to run a niche channel like mine. Without the awesome support that I get from my patrons, Battle Nonsense would not exist anymore. You can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you can also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.